Okay, let's take a look at how to make a histogram using Excel. I have uh, went out to the internet and found some data on my favorite, one of my favorite professional athletes, uh, Derek Jeter of the New York Yankees, just retired a year or so ago. And what you're looking at are the number of hits he had in each of his 20 seasons with the Yankees. You can see that the last value is in the 21st cell, but if you take off the title, we have 20 values listed here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a histogram, and to make that histogram, we first need to decide how we're going to set up the intervals for our histogram. We can't just have each number of hits representing a bar, or we would have 200 and something bars in our histogram, which wouldn't make sense. Uh, so we're going to go with intervals. I'm going to use uh, intervals that are 25 units wide. So I'll go from, for example, 0 to 25, 25 to 50, and so forth. But where do I stop? What's the highest value? One quick way to determine what the highest value is, is we can go ahead and uh, sort. So if I go to the uh, data column here, or the data tab, I can just go ahead and hit sort. And that sorted the data from largest to smallest. If I hit it again, I can switch it from um, in ascending order from least to greatest, and that's the way I want to look at it for now. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make our frequency distribution. So I'm going to create two columns here. I'm going to have number of hits and I'm going to have number of seasons or frequency. And in the number of hits, I'm going to go from 0 to 25, then from 25 to 50, and then from 50 to 75, and keep going up by the same, make sure, making sure each of my intervals is the same size. They're all going to be 25 units wide. You might be saying to yourself, well now hold on for a second here, if Derek Jeter had 25 hits in a season, which one of these intervals would it go in? Would it go in the 0 to 25 interval, or would it go in the 25 to 50 interval? Well, the answer is, it would actually go in the 25 to 50, because when you set up a frequency distribution, this 0 to 25 actually means 0 to less than 25. 25 to 50 actually means 25 to less than 50, and so forth. Well, you might say again, well then, why don't we just go 0 to 24, 25 to 49, 50 to 74, and so forth. Well, the reason we don't do that is what if, um, for example, Derek Jeter had, well, this doesn't make sense in this case, but 24 and a half hits. What if we're talking about an NFL player with sacks where you can actually have a half of a sack? Where would the 24 and a half go if we went 0 to 24 and 25 to 50? It would have no place to go. Also keep in mind with a histogram, you should not have, um, there should be no gap between the bars. If there's no gap between the bars, there should also be no gap between the intervals. So we're going to go ahead and set our intervals up this way. I'm going to pause the video and finish typing in my intervals, then we're going to pick up from there. So I'll be back in one second. Okay, we're back, and the intervals are all set up here, and we're ready to go ahead and start to determine how many seasons Derek Jeter had with hits that fell into each one of these intervals. Now we could look down through here and see we twice we are in the 0 to 25 and it uh, looks like one time we were in the 125 to 150 and none of these happened at all and we go through and count them all individually but Excel has a tool that will do that for us also so let's take a look at it. So we're going to enter in a formula. To enter a formula you always start off with the equal sign. So we're going to type equals, that's the way Excel knows that we're creating a formula and I'm going to start to t just type in the formula I want. I want to use the count ifs formula. And you can see that as I type that, it kind of fills it in for me. Uh, and now it's going to give me some hints on what I need to include in this formula. So the first thing I need to do is tell it what data I want to count from. So I'm going to go ahead and select those cells. Say I want to count from, the, from those cells. And then I'm going to put a comma. And now I need to enter my criteria. What am I counting? I want to count all the times that are all the, all the values that are greater than 0 but less than, actually greater than or equal to 0 and less than 25. To do that we're going to need some quotations. I'm going to say greater than or equal to 0 and then I'm going to do a comma and you notice I have to, for the second criteria I have to give the range again. So I'm going to select those cells again and I'm going to put a comma in again and in quotations I'm going to say less than 25. And if I go ahead and hit enter now, you can see we'll get two cells that have that meet those criteria. Now what I would like to be able to do is I don't want to type that over and over again. I'd like to just be able to drag that down through here. But there is a problem. If I drag that down through there, if you look, 
look at the second at the next cell. Up in the formula bar, we have um, the the interval or the the criteria range is now actually a three to a twenty two. In other words, when I drug that cell downward, it actually incremented those values, which we don't want to happen. So this is a problem. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to put that back in there. So I'm going to go back up to the original cell where I typed the formula, and I'm going to lock in the a2 to a21. And the way you lock those values so that they don't increment when you drag is use a dollar sign. So I'm going to put a dollar sign between the a and the 2, and a dollar sign between the a and the 21. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Dollar sign between the a and the 2, dollar sign between the a and the 21. I'm going to hit enter. Now you'll see when I drag the formula this time, those values will not increment. If, as I look down through each one of these cells, they all go from A2 to A21. So remember that dollar sign can be used to lock those values in. Now next what I'm going to do is I have to just change. I no longer want to be greater than or equal to 0 and less than 25. I want to be greater than or equal to 25 and less than 50. So I'm just going to go into the formula bar up top. I'm going to change that 0 to a 25. I'm going to change that 25 to a 50. And you can see that didn't happen at all. I'm going to go down through the rest of these cells and update the formula bar to match the interval. I'll go ahead and pause the video so you don't have to sit through that. And you can do the same thing with your spreadsheet. Uh, and we'll be back in just a second. OK, so I've gone through and I've updated all those values to match the intervals. 200 to 225, 175 to 200, and so forth on up through. And now we have a nice frequency distribution of Derek Jeter's uh, number of hits per season while he was a pro. Now we want to turn that frequency distribution into a histogram. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select the entire frequency distribution. I'm going to click on the Charts tab, and I'm going to choose the first option which is the column chart and if you click on that you get a whole bunch of different column charts you can create we're gonna pick the first one called a clustered column ours won't actually be clustered because we don't have two different data sets we just have one but if I go ahead and create that clustered column chart you can see that it creates a bar chart that isn't quite what we're looking for a histogram should not have gaps between the bars like we see here uh, but we can go ahead and fix that so what we're going to do to fix that is we're going to go to this quick chart layouts. And if you hover over it, you'll see we get a little um, down arrow we can click on. If we click on that, we have all these different chart layouts to choose from. Well, one of them, the one I'm highlighting in green right now, that actually looks like the histogram that we're looking for. So we're going to go ahead and click that one. You'll see that all of a sudden, no longer do we have gaps. This looks like a histogram. There are no gaps between our intervals, so we don't have any gaps between our um, bars either and this looks much better. We can go ahead and clean this up a little bit with uh, some titles. Hits per season for Derek Jeter. I'm going to click on that guy and then double click to highlight that text and change that. That's number of hits. And this guy over here is number of seasons. So we've updated our um, axis labels, we've got a nice title on there, and this uh, histogram looks good, it's ready to go. We can now copy it, hit Command C, copy it, uh, paste it into a PowerPoint, a Word document, wherever we wanted to use this histogram. So hopefully that you found that uh, video helpful and you're ready to go ahead and uh, make histograms and even take that knowledge and put it towards making different kinds of charts in Excel. Uh, I think that should help you throughout our course.